Welcome to How To Plant Based, where we show you how to use and create plant-based basics. Today is episode one, where we are going to show you how to make delicious vegan bread that is soft and fluffy every single time. You're going to start by grabbing bread flour. The best thing to do is measure this out by using a scale. However, if you're an American, then that's likely a foreign concept, so the least thing you can do is spoon out your flour into a measuring cup. Bread flour is used for its higher protein content, which leads to a lighter and fluffier bread in the end, but all-purpose flour can be swapped at a one-to-one -one ratio. We want this to be insanely easy, pretty foolproof recipe for you, so we are using an instant yeast instead of active dry, so there's no need to activate the yeast first, and it can go right in with your dry ingredients. Then some vegan cane sugar to help with texture, specifically the moisture, as well as browning and taste, and then some salt. And whisk that together really well. Lastly, we're adding in some room temperature water. Again, to make this easy, you don't need to be overly concerned about the temperature. Just make sure it's not piping hot or you do risk ruining your yeast. Using a spatula, you're going to combine your dough until you see no more flour bits at the bottom of your bowl, and you'll have a pretty shaggy looking dough ball at this point. Lightly flour surface and put some extra flour off to the side at this stage, you do not want to add any more than an additional half a cup of flour to your dough. You could technically not need this recipe and still end up with a delicious dough, but we do recommend kneading it for a few minutes just to help those gluten strands develop even more and giving a better bread at the end. Keep adding a little bit of flour at a time, using a bench scraper if you have one to easily get your dough up. You want this dough to spring back but not be sticking to your hands. Once you're in a good spot, put your dough back into your bowl and cover it in a warm place for 60 to 90 minutes or until it has doubled in size. Now, the most important part here is that you are not watching the time but watching your dough. Once it's doubled in size, you can move on, but depending on your location or house, that may be 50 minutes or it could be 100. Lightly grease and add parchment paper to a standard bread loaf pan my favorite tip is to use these binder clips to hold down those wings. Once your dough is doubled in size, punch it down and pull it into a lightly floured surface. To get the best breadcrumb at the end of your product, lightly shape your dough into a rectangle and then roll it up into a tight oval. When you have your loaf, put it into your prepared pan. Expert tip here, remove those binder clips as soon as you put your loaf in. Do as I say, not as I do here. You'll want to recover your dough and allow it to rise until it's doming over your pan about an inch or so, which will take about another hour. Again, watch the dough, not your timer. When that's ready, it's time to bake and your end result is a delicious golden brown loaf, bear claw mitts not included. You'll want to rub some non-dairy butter over it carefully right after coming out. I didn't get to this step immediately because, well, children. But adding the butter here helps with the crust texture, making it softer. Remove your bread from the pan and place it on a cooling rack. As tempting as it is, you really want to wait at least an hour to cut into your bread, ideally a few hours if possible. Letting it cool completely develops more flavor, retains more moisture, and gives a better overall texture. When you are finally ready to cut it, you'll want to use a bread knife with a serrated edge. This helps to ensure that the crumb isn't compromised when cutting. Now for the fun part, you can slice your bread as thin or thin thick as you want, the choice is totally yours. You are left with a delicious, simple bread recipe that is soft, airy, fluffy, has the perfect crumb pockets, not to mention an irresistible smell in your house all day long. When you make bread from scratch, you really want it to have a good bounce to know just how tender and fluffy it is, and you'll get that with this recipe every single time. Seriously, you won't be able to get enough of it. I do just want to mention that if you slice your bread and you have these pockets, while it can be from a few different reasons, the biggest is that when shaping your loaf before baking, you didn't fold it tight enough, so try not to have it super loose, but overall a few here and there isn't a big issue. This bread is absolutely perfect for buttering or spreading jam onto, but one of our family's favorite ways to use it is the iconic homemade grilled cheese. It gets that perfect golden brown hue all over. We won't get into the lack of vegan cheese pool, but oh my gosh, you'll want this again and again. I mean, listen to that crunch. It is so good. It is perfectly soft on the inside, nice little crust on the outside. It is crumbly, it is delicious, and you will have perfect bread every single time. Enjoy.